All right. So people have asked, can I have a cheat sheet on all the algebra or trig we're going to need? Well, yes, no. But let me tell you what we've got so far. So if I'm creating my cheat sheet or I'm creating my reference sheet for where we are so far, this is what I would do. I would draw my triangle or my circle. with an angle in here, I would go ahead and label it. And we know that the sine is gonna be the opposite over the hypotenuse. We know that the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we know that the tangent is my opposite over the adjacent, or that's going to be the sine over the cosine. We know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I might want to include my quadratic formula. And I always have to double check and look it up to make sure I got my positives and my negatives in the right space. So there's some of the math that I need. We now have three equations in motion. We have my change in position is equal to my initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. And this is good. This is always making the assumption that acceleration is equal to a constant. And if acceleration is equal to zero, this gives us our change in position is just equal to my velocity times time. This equation simplifies to one of the first equations that we have. I've got my velocity final is equal to my velocity initial plus my acceleration times time. I have my final velocity squared is equal to my initial velocity squared plus two times my change in position. This one is in units of x or variables of x, a, and t. This one is in variables of v, a, and t. This one's in variables of v, a, and x. We also know that vectors have direction and magnitude. They can be added head to tail. We can re represent a vector as a value with a unit vector in the x direction and a value with a y direction where i and j, and if I want to do it in the z direction, k, our unit vectors have a magnitude of 1. in those directions. We can also do 3a is going to be three, or three of my vectors would look like this. If I multiply it by a minus two, this is gonna look at a minus two. So I have that kind of way to do it. If I want to, so if I've got a vector A, we're going to call this vector A, and we're going to use a little a and a little b, and then I have a vector 3b, which is going to be 3 
we're going to do this as a C. If I'm trying to add vectors A plus 3B, that's going to equal A plus 3Ci plus B plus 3Cj. And this is my resultant vector. If I'm given a point, we're going to use 1.5 and we'll do a minus 2.4. We can represent this in vector form. And that would now be my vector form is 1.5 in the i direction oops, plus minus 2.4 in the j direction. We can find out its magnitude. Magnitude is going to equal the square root of 1.5 squared plus minus 2.4 squared. And that ends up as 2.8. And the angle is going to be related to the tangent, which gives us the arc tangent. And I've got a negative 2.4 divided by 1.5. This gives me a negative 58 degrees. And if I'm drawing my picture, this is my negative or my negative 2.4. Oh, there's putting my point on the wrong side. This is my negative, this is my point that's 1.5, negative 2.4. This is my vector that I just drew. And my opposite is this side. So the angle that I just figured out is this angle right here. That's a negative 58 degrees. And that's the angle that I just calculated. And I had to draw my picture to show that because Wetmassign may want me to figure out and provide this angle. And that angle would be 302 degrees. And it would just be a matter of what what answer to the question that WebAssign has given me. So that's what we've covered so far. I mean, we've we've covered quite a bit for the semester already. Okay, and I've got somebody who wanted to know when to go over the arc tangent. Okay, so this, the tangent, if I want to find the tangent of the angle, that's the opposite over the adjacent. But if I'm wanting to find the angle, I have to take the arc tangent of the angle. That gives me the actual angle. So the arc tangent is when I'm trying to find the angle, I have to use the arc tangent because it's going to, because otherwise it's just going to give me the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. That's the tangent, just gives me that ratio. But if I want to find the actual angle, I have to use the arc tangent. 
And we're going to use the arc tangent to give us the direction. Because remember, vectors have angles, or vectors have magnitude and direction. Okay, we're going to turn things on its head just a little bit. I'm going to stop and rec stop recording.